you know, I've got to hand it to this movie. Despite what follows, it does have the greatest tagline of all time. First, look at the poster. Chainsaw, body parts stitched together, and the title is Pieces. What other tagline could fit this movie other than, it's exactly what you think it is? Really? It's tasteless? Because that's what I'm thinking it is. Although we may be in safe hands, because this guy says it's one of the best slasher films of all time. Wait, no, not that guy. This guy. Because I fully trust the taste of a man who gave us this. Pancakes! Thanks for creating my deadly allergy to starch, asshole. Pieces opens in 1942, unless of course you count the 1970s push-button phone or the post-40s sports team on the wall. The only way this scene would be less like 1942 is if the kid were shown playing the game 1942. They got one thing right though, back in the old days, you had to piece together your porn. Hey kid, you want a real challenge? Try figuring out the G-spot on that picture. Now there's a real puzzle. Unfortunately, the kid is caught by his mother. You dirty-minded little brat! Playing with filth like this! Just like your father! Wait till she sees there's wire hangers in his closet. The boy ends up reacting the same way any guy would if you were to take away his porn. Axe to the face! How's that for a prologue? Fuck. What did they use? Frozen blood for their lettering? Must have ran out, though, since they switched the font to tell us it's 40 years later. Now the killer wears an overcoat, black gloves, and he wants Jane Curtin dead. Guess we're in Hill Valley now as a random skateboarder roams the area and... What? Giant glass mirror? I didn't know people actually carried glass across streets. I thought that was something that only existed in cartoons. <laughs> Wait, why is she having a flashback to the opening? She wasn't there. I understand the killer flashing back to it, but not Maureen McFly here. Oh, they're just not even gonna say who that was? Alright. Because this movie about body parts isn't bloody enough, we need someone thrown through glass just to spice it up. Let's get back to the in-context death scenes. Hey, you're gonna be long? If so, I'll move somewhere else. Just a few minutes, Smith. Yes, it's hard to study next to the masked man with a chainsaw. Just don't be surprised when this happens. <laughs> Hot on the case are officers Christopher George and Leslie Nielsen. <laughs> no, not the real Leslie Nielsen. The pod people Leslie Nielsen. I'm doing a one-man show. Leslie Nielsen, Leslie Nielsen, Leslie Nielsen. The two inform the dean that... Wait, Edmund Perdom? The guy from Zombie 6 and Don't Open Till Christmas? He did it! Of course, they want you to think other characters may be responsible, like the teacher with skulls on his desk. Or how about some of the students? What are the pectorals? My friends all laugh at me. They say mine are funny. Don't mind her. She's on her way to her Audrey Horn audition for Twin Peaks. But don't forget about adding Bluto to the suspects list. Let's get around the clock security on Shelley Duvall. <laughs> but I like this scene. Look at the look on Bluto's face. The Dean may look calm, but he's just shit his pants five times acting opposite this guy. The movie needs another hero, though. And that's why we have Arnie Cunningham here. Here's what I think of his throwing skills. Hmm? It stinks. Wah, wah, wah. That's right, Rick from Pod People. They're getting the whole cast together for this one. I hear at one point, Trumpy stood in for a torso. Actually, maybe I was wrong about the Dean. Clearly, the Shadow is the killer. I already like this better than the 1994 version. Anyway, sorry, I'm speaking over the Chainsaw's lines. <laughs> I can tell that I'm watching the legendary uncut version, because that scene didn't show anything! In this movie, Pod People Rick plays Kendall, local geeky ladies' man. It was left for you in the Dean's office a half hour ago. I've been looking all over. Hear the engines roll now, burning rubber tires. I see. 
Kendall makes it to the pool just in time to beat Sasquatch with a 2x4. Already these guys are doing more than the idiots at the end of the geek. Hold it! Or I'll blow your brains out! Do you have the authority for that? You ain't got the authority to declare happy birthday! Bluto is taken away and being charged with first degree red herring, while the homicide detectives are called onto the scene. Now look, Professor, I don't want to wait for the coroner's opinion, so could you give me yours? Yes, she's dead. Now, could that have been done with the chainsaw? You mean the chainsaw covered in blood next to a set of body parts? Yeah, it just might be the weapon. A school psychologist is called in to run idiot control now on Kendall. But I don't know the killer. Sure you do. It's the Dean. But George soon asks for Kendall's help. Look, kid, all you have to do is keep your eyes open. Basically, I need you to do what I, as police officer, should be doing, only I'll be too busy acting in a movie about a killer grizzly. It's okay, though, because he's partnered with a tennis pro. And you can tell how amazing at tennis she is by the fact that she stands in only one place and hits the ball. I joke, but this scene more than any televised tennis match, actually captures the feel of watching a tennis game in real life. As the killer prepares to take more body parts, he puts pieces of his puzzle together as the movie goes along. Nice that the blood on the puzzle stayed red for 40 years. Easy there. Hacking up a body is as simple as cutting butter. But putting puzzle pieces together, <laughs> that can take some force. Meanwhile, in the Toxic Avenger, Dick Tracy scopes out his latest victim. You know, the 80s were a terrible time to be an aerobics instructor. If you weren't dying in a slasher film called Pieces, you were getting your tit bitten off by radioactive zombies. Or even worse, starring in the movie Perfect. Oh, sorry, don't mind this chainsaw, you can clearly see me hiding. Huh, she had arms? Sorry, I was looking at her tits the whole time. Of course, the killer gets away before the cops show up. All right, what happened? We must have scared him off, Lieutenant. You couldn't scare off Trumpy. At least here, though, George can get a good look at all the suspects. It could either be Jeffrey Jones, John Reese Davies, Elijah Wood, Marky Post, or the killer. Enough of that murder shit. Time to get to the sexier side of slasher flicks. Oh, Kendall. I just saw Rick from Pod People's Dick. Don't know what to say about that, except the killer's is bigger. Oh, I can see why it's convenient to dress in black at night when you're carrying a bright yellow chainsaw. Unless something out of the ordinary happens here, Mary the undercover tennis pro is dead. <laughs> just happened! Believe it or not, this random martial arts sequence can actually be explained. The film's producer, Dick Randall, was also known for producing a number of Bruce Bloitation films, such as Bruce Lee Fights Back and The Clones of Bruce Lee. And in an effort to provide a little advertising for those films, one of the Bruce Bloitation actors pops out of nowhere, attacks the actress, and passes out for no reason. Yeah, because that works in context to this college campus slasher film. They better explain this in the movie. Oh, hey, it's my kung fu professor. Kendall has a kung fu professor? Well, now I'm really not buying it. Let's hope this scene ends tastefully, at least. Something I eat. Bad chop suey. So long. Take it easy. Let this be a lesson to you people on campus. If you see a tracksuit-wearing Chinaman, he will attack you and mispronounce his L's. 
because he had bad chop suey. Huh. Could that have been any more out of nowhere? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Oh, that's for shooting me in the kneecap last year. Oh. Ow. <laughs> Back to the non bruceploitation part of the movie. The killer follows a local reporter into one of the buildings, and you can tell she's a really good investigator because she spots a chainsaw in the sauna and thinks nothing of it. Eh, I don't know about this death scene. Going from a chainsaw to a knife, not as impressive. Like going from Patrick McGowan to Jim Caviezel. Maybe the actress simply didn't want a chainsaw rammed through the back of her head. Luckily, this actress doesn't have a no chainsaw clause in her contract, so you know what that means. <laughs> Thank God, other people do that too. Naturally, the groundskeeper is lurking about, and ugh, you're not the killer. I'm not falling for it. Though I still love every look on this actor's face. See that? Every look on his face comes across like he's suspicious of why he wants to rape them. Let's hope the killer didn't leave too much of a mess this time. <gasps> Interesting how the only thing I had to black box there was the tits, because there was nothing else wrong with that shot. Mary continues on with her investigation by getting to know each member of the college faculty. Do you mind if I walk with you for a ways? I'm a little nervous after what's happened. In broad daylight here in the middle of the campus, I don't think there's much to worry about. Yeah, tell that to this girl. As we see here, all along, the killer has been stitching together some kind of female body assembled by the various pieces he's been collecting. You know, like the poster gives away. Only the poster didn't spoil his diabolical plan of giving her ill-fitted shoes. While Kendall and the detective perform background checks, I think the movie may be telling us that Reagan is the killer. Although he hasn't done anything suspicious yet. Well, I can change that in a hurry. Anyway, Mary eventually makes her way to the Dean's place, and why not go inside? Seems like a nice enough killer. Now, what would you like to drink? I'm just making tea, but uh, I expect you'd prefer coffee. She would prefer not to be killed, killer. You're the killer! But before he tends to her, he's got to poison the nostalgia critic's tea. Well, she hasn't started feeling the effects of the drugs yet, so he might as well try to lay blame on another co-worker. Not like she won't figure out it's you eventually. Professor Brown, you see, is a homosexual. I found out about him some years ago. Brown seems more upset about his affliction than I am. Oh, tell me more, guy drinking tea with his pinky raised. Sure enough, she keeps drinking from the cup and... what? She's passing out? Oh shit! The Dean's the killer? I've been very careful as not to spoil that throughout this entire review. That's the effect of the drug I gave you. The rape oh drug. <laughs> That's the second human centipede reference in two weeks! Cause why not? Luckily, the police burst in and Kendall wrestles with the killer for a bit and... <laughs> He was aiming for Kendall. The stitched together body is found in the bookcase, and thus ends this wholesome murder mystery. Well, that was a fairly graphic slasher film for the time, but other than the extreme amounts of gore, the movie wasn't too out of the ordinary for a slasher film. Hey, my jacket. Like I said, the movie wasn't too out of the ordinary. What the fuck was that? 
Okay, let's forget for a second that this guy was a killer. He managed to bring life to a corpse that was stitched together by random body parts. That makes him a medical genius. And now he's dead. The world will never know how the fuck he managed to do that. If I want to see a real movie about pieces, I'll stick with Britannia Hospital, thank you very much. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to spend the next few moments mourning over Kendall's balls. Because someone has to. Bastard!